Hey everyone, it's Arshan. Welcome to another edition of the Journey to CEO show. Joining me in just a minute will be Dr. Ann Gaddy. As most of you know, we do these shows together, helping people on that journey from entrepreneur to CEO. And if you're tuning in, you're probably somewhere in that journey. Uh, we also tailor our lessons to advocates. So you might be a nonprofit person who's thinking about how do you build a bigger organization. We consider that part of uh, being a CEO as well. It doesn't necessarily have to be just a for-profit enterprise. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about the importance of innovation. And we, we've published a book recently called Redirection. If you viewed the thumbnail uh, for this video on YouTube, you saw uh, the cover of that book. You can get that on Amazon. It's all about redirecting your business in light of this world that we're living in with the pandemic, et cetera. And one of the lessons we want to drive home is innovation. So we're going to spend some time today talking about the importance of getting innovation into your organization. And then the book Redirection, which again is available on Amazon, will go deeper on some of these topics that we're talking about and give you kind of a broader overview of how it all kicks together. Dr. Ann, good to see you this morning. Well, it's great to be here again. Another we, great show. Yes, we were hanging out and we got some live viewers. Live viewers, feel free to drop a note. Let us know where you're viewing from and uh, what your thoughts are on innovation, and how it impacts your business. And so, you know, we talk about Blockbuster and Kodak a lot. You and I talked about it in the pre-show. You know, here, here's two organizations that had huge infrastructures, had great market share, had a great Rolodex of uh, customers and they refused to innovate. They just said, we are what we are. We're not going to innovate. And we can see how that worked out for them. And we see the same thing happen on a smaller scale with other businesses too, right? They just refuse to change. And that refusal to get new ideas and to look at the broader market, you know, can lead to a death spiral. Well, I think that you've got to, as a business owner, really see what it, the service is you are providing you know yes you may be a car uh sales company but you're really providing transportation you know it's not simply i'm a car salesman yeah. um one company that i would like to just talk about briefly is a company that realized that the market share was going to shrink um and and broadened themselves brought out their services and that is um mind safety appliances msa and when they started they started with two gentlemen um, who were engineers in the mining business and they were concerned about the safety of the miners you know mm -hmm. they went from having little canaries and cages that would let us know if there was mm -hmm. um uh carbon dioxide or whatever in the i think it or methane um in the mine that was getting you know yeah, too high. So they were innovative in designing equipment that actually worked. And what they found in the second generation, when they took over, um, the, the son of one of the owners took over and realized, hey, this is a, the mining industry is a limited in, industry in safety. And this kind of breathing apparatus that we have is also good for firefighters and mm -hmm. other organizations. So they broadened out and were innovative in deciding that they were going to be marketing themselves as a safety company, not just for miners. They weren't in the mining business, they were in the safety business. So that's just where they took it. And then um, they've also gone into home safety. They've gone with a lot of other products that are for safety. So I think that uh, companies need to consider what the services are, who they're giving those services, who they're directing those services to, and is there a way to broaden that other people can use those services? Um, like you said about Kodak, Kodak just decided we're in the film business. We yeah. have this wonderful revenue stream and we're going to protect it. Well, they protected it all right, but it's not there anymore. So what they could have said is we're in, um, capturing memories, or mm -hmm. we're in uh, a business that is providing, um, as you said, you know, fi uh, you know, um, preserving, what did you, uh, preserving pic pictures or whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, they could have broadened in a lot of ways, but chose to stay. Yeah. Cause people, about film. people are taking more pictures today than they were back then. Right. I mean, so, 
you know, the picture industry grew. Yes, they got some competitors through the cell phone companies and other things, but man, the demand for pictures went up. And here's a company that said, well, we're, we're, we're in the pictures on printed paper business, which right. has become a real niche, right? I mean, that's not, most people just, you know, you take a digital image, it goes on your computer, maybe upload it to Facebook or Instagram, and it just lives there online forever, lives on your cell phone. Uh, and most people just don't even bother to go to the step of printing on paper. And so you have a great, I mean, I get it. I mean, Kodak, you're like, well, we're the best at making the paper and selling the paper and selling the negatives and all these things. Unfortunately, people just didn't want it. And, and your desire to continue selling a product or a service that the market doesn't want is not going to drive demand. And, you know, Kodak went that way. And, you know, Blockbuster is the other one we always use as the parallel, right? I mean, they were like, well, we, we, we help people get DVDs. Well, people really just didn't care about the DVD, right? I mean, they did not care. They wanted the movie. They wanted to what, watch the experience. They didn't want, they didn't want that physical piece of plastic that they had to go pick up at the store. They had to go drop off at the store. They didn't want that piece of plastic. They wanted the movie. Well, and I think the other thing to consider, uh, Gallup did a poll just recently about. Um, what businesses found most important during this, what characteristics businesses found most important during this pandemic. And the number one um, characteristic was speed. And that is being able to pivot, being able to get things, you know, being able to change, being productive was number two. And then uh, cost reduction was three. So, you know, it's not simply, oh, we're just going to cut costs here, but we have to figure out a way to pivot. We have to figure out a way to be productive in a different way of working. And that's, that's a kind of innovation. You know, we're not just talking about product innovation. We're talking about the way we work. We're talking yep. about the way we communicate. Um, we're talking about all, all areas of the business need yeah. that creative thought process. Yeah. I mean, and you know, I mean, a classic example going the other direction from the Kodak and Blockbuster, I mean, IBM, right? I mean, here's a computer, here's a company that was in the business of making computers, making big computers. And then, you know, they, they jumped into the PC industry, the personal computer, right? And for a long time, they even referred to it. It was either IBM or Mac, IBM or Mac, right? And eventually somebody at IBM said, oh, my God, we're in a commodity business. You know, we're going to get killed if we keep making PCs as our primary line of business. We got to figure something else out. And, you know, then they took it into an information business. Again, bridges, right? And we talked about bridges in our book, Bridges of Success uh, in Redirection. And that's what a lot of these companies have done. You use your existing customer base. You use your existing knowledge and expertise. And you bridge to something that, that this part of the future, future of your business, future of the economy. Uh, but you keep building bridges and sometimes you got to say, Hey, we're, we're not in a good spot or we're headed the wrong direction. We need a bridge going somewhere else to make them. Well, you, you know, when to hold them and you know, when to fold them. So, yeah. you know, and that can be difficult. Your culture, business culture can be very upset if a particular product or a particular service has to uh, be closed or shut down. Mm -hmm. If it's not producing, if it's not any longer being uh, the success that you need, then it may be time to stop yeah. that and start something else. And we do say that to uh, entrepreneurs all the time. One of the most important things to learn is when to stop doing something. Yeah. And, you know, this is really truly about being strategic, right? So we talk about business strategy. Uh, what a lot of businesses do, and I watch this again and again, they get in the they get into to the mindset of getting better at what they're doing, improving performance, and rarely, you know, and this is somewhere where you can have a real competitive advantage as a small and medium business. I mean, rarely do small and medium businesses stop and say, "Hey, should we even be doing this? Does this make sense? Are we headed the right direction?" Right? Just that little bit of time with your top leadership team and listening to your employees and saying, Hey, should we go another direction can be huge because, you know, it's like the lemmings, right? If everybody's going off the cliff, you just keep <laughs> running off the cliff with everybody else. And that's what a lot of businesses do, right? Like our customers are buying our products. Our customers are buying our products. I mean, Blockbuster, they're renting DVDs, they're renting DVDs, they're renting DVDs until they just stopped renting DVDs. And well, and they didn't, um, they kept their, 
you know, nose down and they were working and working and didn't look up to see that Netflix was coming along or, you know, you've got to right. see what is, what is driving the consumer behavior yep. and, and where are things changing? Yeah. And um, a lot of companies all of a sudden with the pandemic were smart enough to say, hey, we manufacture product. We can manufacture because of how we have things set up. We can manufacture um, disinfectant or we can yeah. do you know, different things that are absolute needs of the public right now. So, you know, they're not only helping the society, but they're using their skills and then building another uh, yeah. line of profit. Well, the distillers was a, was a classic example, right? I mean, a lot of them, you get a drop in business because people, particularly people had like an in-person microbrewery or whatever, right? People just start coming to the microbrewery because everything shut down, may have been shut down by regulation. But, you know, and you, you pointed out, right, a lot of those management teams and those companies, they knew how to make product. They had the, and they had the capacity. They had the, they had the stuff, right? And so, boom, they just... Looked at their looked at their abilities, looked at the market need, and they paired the two together, and it was a perfect bridge, right? It wasn't wasn't a long term solution, right? I don't think most of those breweries are still making hand sanitizers in massive quantities, but they built a bridge. They said, "Look, we got supply, market demand, we got the expertise, boom, boom, boom," and that's well, what we need to all be looking for. Business, they survived. Yeah, you know, and, and we talk about surviving to thrive. Um, another example would be you, you look around and when we had everybody uh, staying home, they still need to eat. They still need food. They still needed um, home supplies. So the grocery stores that said, hey, we deliver, were able to keep themselves in business, but also provide a service for their community. So those kind of things are what we're talking about with innovation. We're not saying come be the next Steve Jobs. We're just saying, take a, take a look at what the consumers need and then what you can either serve, what, what products you have or what services you have and how can you bridge that and, and how can you maybe change? Um, and it doesn't have to be a huge innovation, but it has to be constantly that that is a part of your DNA that you are thinking about how can we be creative? How can we uh, continue to stay relevant mm -hmm. within the context of what's going on in our society? Yeah, it's part of a, it's a cultural thing, right? And this is what I think we're really trying to drive home to our clients, to our readers, uh, to people who might be hiring us here in the near future to come in and help them. Is we, Culturally, we've got to build in that strategic thinking, right? And there's some exercises that you know, we can, we can help you and your teams go through to kind of think about this. But the idea, like you say, is get your head up once in a while and say, where are we going? Why are we going there? Is that still the right path? And, right. you know, there's different times and places. Yes, there should be meetings about how do we get better at what we're doing, right? I mean, if you're Blockbuster, you know, there should have been meetings about how do we get more stores? How do we rent more DVDs, right? You know, you don't stop that, but there had to, there should have been meetings about, you know, what's how else can we deliver? Right. What's the future of DVDs, right? Or, or can right. we, or can we find a better way to do it? That's customer focused, right? A lot of right. at the end of the day, this all ends up being customer focused. If we look at both Kodak and Blockbuster, the two examples that we talk about frequently, they didn't pay attention to what the customer wanted, right? That Blockbuster customer wanted to watch the movie, and they loved not having to go to the store, right? I mean, once they got to where they could load it up on Netflix, click, 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 watch. You know, if it's two o'clock in the morning, you want to watch Netflix, you just turn it on, right? I mean, going to a blockbuster right. store is inconvenient. Um, right. And, you know, somebody that was thinking about it from the customer experience could have thought about that. Same with Kodak, right? I mean, you know, the, the having the physical camera, having the negative, being able to print it off, getting it photo developed, getting it put on paper. I mean, pain, 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 right? And, and what they do, they just took away friction by going to digital, right? And, Somebody yeah, they missed that. that out, and so it became instant, you know, and that's the thing we talk about with speed so that you get things instantly and, and think about it. If you're on your computer, how frustrated you get if things are taking a while to load or if the, you know, internet isn't as fast today or, you know, I mean, we're expecting now that kind of convenience. And yeah. I think that that's something that uh, people need to be considering 
when they're building out their business um, or, or changing their business, um, what's, what's the next technology? I think that technology, and we talk about that in our book, Entrepreneur to CEO, that technology is very important to keep a handle on because you don't have, they, people don't even have DVD players anymore. Right. The VCR, I never learned how to program a VCR and look, I don't need to because we don't have VCRs oh. anymore. Cassette yeah. players, uh, eight tracks. I mean, all these things that just went by the wayside. Um, although I guess vinyl records are coming back into vogue, but still, yeah. you know, that's just technology moving ahead. And that engine is continuing to move ahead. So it's right. almost like when we talk about Wayne Gretzky, yeah, who's moving, sk who skated to where the puck was going to go, not to where the puck currently is. Absolutely. You know, and yeah, I mean, you mentioned vinyl records and I mean, it's a niche play, but yes, I mean, there, but there's a reason why if you dig into that, there's a reason why, and there's a reason why people are still using film for cameras too, right? For high end photographers that are doing specialized work, you need a negative, right? And you need to go through that process. But what you got to remember is, you know, you got to look at your overall markets. Uh, most people, you know, want to remove for friction, particularly in consumer products, right? Where, you know, people are buying a lot of consumer products. They're busy. They're they're things are moving fast these days. They want friction out, right? They don't want to have to drive to the store. They don't want to have to do printouts of, of of film. You know, they don't want to have to get negatives developed and then get pictures made. They want to move faster, right? And then we're, I think most of us can apply that to our business. Our customers generally want whatever good or service you're providing, but they want it in a more convenient package, right? So that's just, right. you know, step one is, I think that's, that's one thing you can introduce into any meeting. Me, is, there, is there a way we can do what we're doing that would cause less friction for our customers, you know? And, and with the pandemic, right. and yeah. with the pandemic, people were learning how to get access to what they needed from their home, from their couch, yeah. from their yeah. desk, at home business desk or whatever. So they like that. And I don't think that's going away, which is why companies are having to add on um, online services and online shops and such, mm -hmm. because people like that convenience. Um, and even takeout food now can be delivered. Um, it you know, was often before, but now uh, companies that or restaurants that hadn't been doing delivery service are finding that, that that's needed. So, you know, and it and so they're seeing okay, businesses if they come together and have a luncheon or whatever, they can you know we'll provide the food, we'll deliver it, which um you know that's a that's a bonus for companies, that's a bonus for businesses. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, particularly, I mean, the consumer side, yes, people want less friction. You know, businesses, a lot of it's cost-driven, right? And if you can, you know, get stuff delivered directly to your office, you know, food or, you know, for a luncheon or whatever it's meeting. All, you it, just say free delivery. Yeah, it just, it just, it, you know, and then you don't have to send your staff member. They don't have the hassle. They can keep working on something else, right? I mean, it's about removing friction so much of this and if there is friction you know you talk about the vinyl record with the cleaning and you have to make sure you don't scratch it and you have to store it there's got to be a reason right people like that extra sound quality there's a reason why people are going to go through the challenges and you've got to really put yourself in that consumer side you know and get your team thinking about that you know and don't even get me started on customer service these days. I mean, some of these big companies, and one of the reasons the small companies often have an ability to compete is these big companies, they sometimes try to hide, right? You got to search out how to contact them. They don't want right. to be contacted, you know, and then you right. get a phone tree with 47 solutions, right? And again, friction, you know, a lot of our customers. That's, that's an important point, uh, Sean, the personal touch, the personal interaction is still very important. And those Ooh. companies, that have a receptionist or someone actually answering the phone yeah. are finding that people really appreciate that. And you start to build customer loyalty just for that, because they know when they have a question, they can get an answer. Right. I mean, that's, that's my world. You know, my clients call me and I talk to them, you know, and right. we move forward. Right. And we just keep moving. Right. Constant progress, you know? And so, um, but that's how you differentiate. We talk about points of differentiation and 
you've got to figure that out, right? The answer isn't always just to implement more technology. You know, here's a web page and fill out a form and do all this stuff. And then, you know, the answer will pop out. Well, you know, some clients that they, again, they want the friction gone, right? I mean, is it more, is it less friction to send your clients to a web page where they fill out a form? Or is it less friction just to have somebody answer the phone and say, Hey, what do you need? Hell, let us, let us get it. Let, let us help you. Let us get it to you. Right. I mean, right. boom. Right. Um, you've got to think about that. The less friction option isn't always, you know, the, the higher tech latest innovation. You know, a lot of people are frustrated. You get in these, you get in these online chats with some of these companies, you know, and you got somebody doesn't understand your account. They don't know what's going on with you. You got to bring them up to speed on everything. Well, uh, I have, uh, I have a colleague who uh, had a question with her health insurance company and she needed to talk to them and, and get some uh, coverage for something that they had not covered before or what have you. But she was on the phone for 25 minutes trying to get a solution. Yeah. And that's just frustrating, you know, and that's you do not. You do not want to set up a situation where you're actually you say, well, we're we've got this system in place. If it's frustrating your your clients and your customers, then that system needs to be changed. And that's really what we're talking about with innovation. It's not, again, the latest and the greatest new thing. It's problem solving and yes. removing the friction and providing the services, the best services you can for your customers. Yes, it is changing. I agree a hundred percent. So, I mean, I, I just want, you know, the viewers to think, you know, the answer isn't always just to make some massive change or do the thing that, you know, do something that just came out in the last five or 10 years. Right. I mean, it can be as simple as, you know, Hey, let's, uh, let's go back to the day where people could actually, you know, call and somebody would pick up the phone, you know, and that person would have knowledge and be able to answer your question. That's old school. That's basic, but there's a lot of businesses out there aren't doing it and they can differentiate you in your marketplace. I mean, that's one of the things I use. People call me, I talk to them and we get their problem done. You know, yeah, it costs more. It's, you know, it's not as cheap as sending somebody through 47 phone trees and outsourcing to a foreign country where the person barely speaks English. That would be cheaper, but it's a much more frustrating experience for the customer from overall customer cost. It's higher, right? I mean, when you start yeah. customers start thinking about, I got to waste twenty five minutes to explain this to somebody who has no idea who I am. That's costly. Well, and and you you just have to have whoever is answering the phone ask a couple of quick questions to know where you know which person to send yeah. the phone call to. You know that can answer them. So you know that's that's simple enough too. It's yeah. not doesn't have to be complicated. No, a lot of this is basic, and it's just. You know, uh, I don't know what the right term is. I think I think the term we've used in the past is benchmarking. You look at what other people are doing and you use that as a way to set standards for yourself, right? I mean, so not necessarily copying, right? I mean, you're not going to call some competitor and see what questions they ask on the phone and ask the exact same questions. That's not the answer. But the no, answer is to say, yeah, the answer is to say what works for my customers, what's good, what are other people doing successfully, how can I learn from that, how can I inspire my thought. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of things we can do. The, I think the key is the lesson for today, for those of you viewing, you know, and drop a comment, let us know what you learned. But, you know, if I had to pick the well, big how thing, you were innovative, what, what, yeah. what are you doing? That's uh, that you would consider innovative that could help somebody else, you know, in yeah. your industry. Yeah. Share, 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 share a tidbit, you know, and well, so much is this cross industry too. I think one of the fun things I've done in the past, and one of the things I think you'll see us doing with the entrepreneur to CEO future in a product, future entrepreneur to CEO project in the future is cross pollinating across industries. You know, um, getting people from different industries in the room, and I've seen a lot of magic happen there because people are like, well, in the you know, in the software app industry, we do this, and then somebody says, oh my god, I can use that in my gardening business or I can use that in my landscaping business, right? So this cross pollination business is business. Um, and we think a lot in terms of our particular industries, our particular niches, but so much of it, you know, applies cross sectionally. If we, if we, if we take the time to step back and say, what can we learn from other people? Right. And, and innovation, innovation's that, right? So we all need to be thinking about that. So, you know, step back, take a look at the big picture, understand how pieces are kicked out and 
constantly assess whether you're going to the right place. If you need more help with it, uh, you know, obviously check out the book Redirections, available on Amazon from me, Sean McBride, and Dr. Ann Gaddy. You'll see our names on the cover there. Grab a copy of that. That will inspire a lot of your thoughts. That will also give you ways to reach out to us if you want to go deeper on this and you want to build some of these tools into your company. We can help you with that. And, of course, make sure you subscribe to the Journey to CEO YouTube channel. We'll be back bringing you more of these updates. And soon we will be releasing our Entrepreneur to CEO book, which uh, will go deeper on many of the topics. Redirection was really a book about the pandemic, the emergency situation, what's happening. Entrepreneur CEO will be a much broader book about that journey from being a business owner to being a CEO. Dr. Ann, having fun. It's a great session. Thank you. Everybody pat yourself on the back for doing the hard work. Drop us a note, and we'll look forward to talking to you soon. We'll be back again with you guys uh, in the near future with another one of these sessions. Get on our email list, and when you do that, you'll be getting updates about what we're, when we're doing these live broadcasts. Catch you all soon.